Um, so hi, everyone. Thanks for joining uh, for this workshop, which is called Connecting Cell Profiler to Elastic and Cell Force. I'm Shatavi Chedas Gupta. I'm a postdoc at the Imaging Platform of Broad Institute. Um, this is a beginner to intermediate slash intermediate level workshop, and it's actually helpful for the hands-on exercise if folks joining us today have some familiarity with the cell profiler interface. But even not, even if not, um, you're welcome. Thanks for joining. And uh, we'll have um, two of my fellow co-postdocs from the imaging platform, Suganya Sivagurunathan and Esteban Miglieta, who would be acting as TAs for this workshop. So we are very much more than happy to help you out with the hands-on exercises. Also, um, before diving into the workshop, a quick plug for the bioimage analysis uh, community survey. So the bioimage analysis community is an ever-growing and ever-evolving one because the image analysis needs also keep on evolving. And for the success of the community, it is very important that we hear those who are actually using these very excellent tools that the bioimage analysis community is producing. So um, even if you have participated before, please do complete the survey because it helps us stay on top of things. And also, um, there's no minimum experience level needed to participate in the survey. So even if you are um, analyzing one image or maybe hundreds of images, we still need to, to hear your voice. And it only takes about five to 15 minutes of, to complete, depending on, on how much of the free text fields that you fill up. So having said that, let's now go straight into the workshop. So here is a representation of what a typical image analysis workflow looks like. So we have experiments that are performed at the bench, and then images are then acquired um, using microscopes. These images are fed into some sort of a software where we perform image pre-processing to improve the signal to noise ratio to make sure that the objects that we are interested in identifying and measuring in these images can be segmented well. Next, we go about finding these objects of interest in the image, followed by then performing measurements so that these can, can then be turned into some data visualization, which will help us make some sense of the experiment that we performed. And one of the very first steps that we do in this image analysis workflow is segmentation. So segmentation, as in case we have folks who joined the, the Intro to Cell Profiler workshop as well, where you might have heard, is basically works on the premise that my object of interest is the brightest object in the image, and it constitutes the foreground, and everything else is the background. And what this helps us do is identify the foreground pixels from the background pixels by using a method called thresholding. And the next thing we would want to do is separate out the objects that we are identifying because we don't want to overcount or undercount these objects. And how we identify the outlines of these objects of interest determines largely on where we set the threshold, with, which as you can see in this um, graph here, uh, setting the threshold too low will incorporate some of the background pixel into the object of interest, whereas setting it too high may mean that you are losing out some of the pixels from your object of interest. And within Cell Profiler, we have several methods like minimum cross entropy, OTSU, robust background, et cetera, which helps us determine the best segmentation for the image that we are working with. And uh, in addition to um, the methods that, that I mentioned just now, we can also perform log transformation on the histogram. And this just helps us uh, setting the threshold better and identifying the objects of interest better. Now coming to then splitting the objects or merging the objects are making sure that we, we, we do not under or overcount the objects of interest from our image. We go on then separating the objects that we identified from the image. And one of the methods that we do it is by means of watershed, which is based on the principle that each object contains a brightest spot, which is considered like the uh, crest or the peak of a mountain. And in between objects, we have troughs or the valleys. And how we go about identifying the separation point is filling up these troughs in a way that helps us find the boundary or point between the two objects that are touching each other. So this can be done by means of intensity, 
or it can also be done by identifying the shape. And these indentations will then help us to determine whether it's actually one single object or it's actually a clump comprising multiple objects. And apart from that, there's also the concept of local maxima, which is basically the minimum distance that we allow between two intensity peaks within the same object for um, and to be to be counted as the same object or to be counted as two different objects. So if we increase the maxima distance, it will ensure that an object is not split unnecessarily. And if we feel that if multiple objects are getting clumped together or there is under segmentation, we just need to then decrease the maxima distance so that um, we overcome this problem of under segmentation. And um, basically, these are the principles which Cell Profiler uses. And so this is what our output window from Cell Profiler will look like when we perform primary object identification using the DAPI channel, which stains the nuclei. And here we can see outlined in green, we have the nuclei that are identified by um, this step. And then we, if we have some other, for example, membrane marker or markers for other organelles within the cell, we can then use that channel to identify the secondary object, which basically works by using the primary objects as a seed, and then using the intensity of the specific markers that were present for the cytoplasm. And by subtracting the nuclei of the primary object from the secondary object, we are then left with the tertiary object, which would be the cell cytoplasm. And then by um, identifying all these, these individual compartments of the cell, we can then go about performing many different kinds of measurements that will then help us understand um, the biology behind the images that we are analyzing. So while this all this can be quite well performed using cell profiler, sometimes we have other needs as well. So what if instead of um, identifying separate compartments of the cell, we are interested in identifying some classes or semantic classes or regions within the image that we are analyzing. So here is an example. This is taken from the website of Elastic, where on the left we see uh, an hematoxylin eosin stained image where we have some cancer cell, some areas of stroma, as well as some healthy cells, which are color coded here as well. And so using this type of segmentation, which is actually called the semantic segmentation, we are identifying these regions within the image. So for example, in magenta, we have all the stromal areas marked out. Um, blue is marking out the cells which are very hard to categorize as cancer or healthy. In red, we have areas that are occupied by cancer cells, and green are areas occupied by healthy cells. So for these, this kind of uh, this specific type of segmentation, which is called semantic segmentation by computational scientists or pixel classification by um, scientists from a more biological background, this task can be very well performed using a tool called Elastic. Elastic is a very simple user-friendly tool, and it is also openly available. And this can be used for um, interactive image classification, segmentation, and analysis. There are many uh, automated workflows that are already available within Elastic, and it can be very easily trained for many different kinds of images. And it can also be used for tracking purposes as well. So for example, in the image below, we can see that these lines are drawn to demarcate like specific areas in an image, and then it can be trained to make these kind of predictions which are shown on the panel on the right. Um, in addition to making uh, semantic segmentation, there are also many other challenges that image analysis face these days. So for example, um, a lot of the times we have to segment objects within the image which do not form, like which do not follow the classical shape of a cell or um, objects that we are more commonly uh, familiar with uh, segmenting. So these can be, for example, these bacteria, which can be elongated object. There can be more atypical shaped cells like donut shaped cells, or sometimes the images can comprise of really overlapping cells, which can be clumped together. And for these kind of um, challenging images, it is, it is seen that usually deep learning algorithms tend to work really well. So CellPose is one 
uh, example of such a generalist deep learning algorithm, which tends to work very well on a very wide variety of images. So um, CellPos is essentially a UNet and which uses um, flow gradients in order to um, create the spatial gradients that can be then uh, that can be then trained the, uh, the neural network can be trained with it and which we can use also the neural network to make predictions from so um and, and it has and in the recent years it has been seen that cell posts can really work well on tissue images as well as on cell images so um now that we have so many excellent tools available, how do we then incorporate these segmentation algorithms like Elastic or CellPost into the cell profiler pipeline? And so for this, we have these things called plugins. So plugins are essentially modules, but they are slightly different from the usual modules because these can be under active development. These may have some very uh, specific use cases and thereby only a very niche audience. There may not be adequate documentation that is usually available for um, other cell profiler modules, or it can be that they work only for specific versions for, of the cell profiler. But using these plugins have now become really easy thanks to the availability of containers. So containers are basically these small executable packages in which um, all the necessary components that are needed for running a program, like the executable file, the configuration file, some parts of the OS can be packaged together so that the biologists who do not necessarily have computational training or a lot of computational expertise can um, overcome the challenges of resolving dependencies in software environments, or they do not have to spend too much time working on the terminal or go through many installation issues and they can just uh, use it anywhere, you, either locally or even on clusters. And this really helps us ensure that the analysis that we are doing are reproducible. And this only requires a one-time installation or use of some platform, for example, Docker Desktop. And there are already many containers that are currently available that the bioimage analysis community is um, actively contributing. So um, with that background, we will now soon head on to uh, doing the hands-on part of the workshop. Um, I would just point out that this workshop will be um, um, including some parts that require working with the Run Cell Post plugin and the Run Elastic plugin. Uh, depending on um, the ease or uh, the comfort with using these different tools, everyone is more than uh, welcome to um, do all the exercises. But if um, someone feels that they are more interested in either of the two algorithms, they can also choose the specific parts of the hands-on exercise to work with. But in general, before we go into it, um, let's just make sure that we have all the programs that we will need for the exercise. So in case you have not done that already, please install Cell Profiler from the link that's mentioned here. And I believe um, it's been posted in the chat as well. We will need to clone the cell profiler plugins repository. The instructions are given here, but we can also go over that um, in the breakout rooms. And once the cell profiler plugins rep repository is cloned and we have the active plugins folder, we just need to set the path in the settings, which will look like this if you are using a Mac, or it may look like these windows if you are uh, using a Windows computer, you would then need to go into the preferences and again, set the path of the cell profiler plugins directory. In addition to that, we will need today Docker desktop. So for that, again, we can go to the link here and then um, install Docker desktop. And then we will need to look for the images that we need for using run cell post and run elastic. So, and I have mentioned the names here. These slides will be shared at the end of my talk. And also we are uh, happy to guide you through uh, during the hands-on part as well. And finally, this is very, very optional, only and only if you're interested in really deep, diving deeper into the run elastic part of the hands-on, you, elast you can install elastic from the link that is mentioned here. Um, and finally, I have also linked some helpful resources uh, and some additional reading material if you are interested to know more about cell post elastic or just cell profiler in general.
So with that, I come to the end of my talk. We will soon be heading into breakout rooms, but I would need to thank um, the Simini Lab, all the members, particularly Beth Simini, who is our wonderful PI, and then Suganya and Esteban in particular for kindly agreeing to be TA for this workshop. And uh, last but not the least, there are also some additional fantastic virtual I2K workshop that my co-postdocs will be hosting. So please add these to your schedule as well. And um, hopefully we will make a lot of progress during the hands-on workshop. But if, if you feel that there were some questions that were not answered, please check out the forum. If you're not familiar with it already, we constantly check that and we try to post answers there. Um, I personally even ask questions there. So it's a fantastic place to receive and give help. Um, so thank you so much for listening. <laughs>